A deeper layer of natural gas has been discovered at the Tamar uh, field off the coast of Haffa, according to a report published on Thursday by Dillick Drilling and Avner Oil Exploration. The impact of the newly discovered reserve has not yet been analyzed nor released in full. The significance of the newly discovered structure will depend on the amount of natural gas at Tamar and on the estimations of additional layers in other areas of the Mediterranean Sea that have not yet been discovered. According to the report, Noble Energy, the American partner leading the consortium is gathering data on Layer D and analyzing the implications of the extent of the reserves at Tamar. The potential of this discovery and others that will follow is enormous and will prove to be the reason uh, Russia will lead an Islamic attack against Israel in the very near future. The Bible says that Russia's attack will be for the reason of taking a spoil. Up until the last few years, this prophecy was certainly developing, but still yielded no reason why Russia would attack for a spoil. Israel is mainly a technology-driven nation with little in the way of natural resources. However, over the last several years, Israel has discovered the Leviathan gas field and is on the verge of converting shale oil sands into 250 billion barrels of oil. This would rival Saudi Arabia's 260 billion barrels of known oil reserves. Many experts believe Israel is on the cutting edge of becoming the leader in the next generation of oil producers. And this could only be the beginning. Israeli natural resources have virtually gone untouched since its birth as a nation. Large oil companies have refused to invest in Israeli oil exploration out of fear they would lose Arab exploration contracts in retaliation for dealing with Israel. But that has all changed. Investors are now beginning to take notice of Israel's vast oil potential, including Russia. I expect to see many more major discoveries in Israel, both in natural gas and oil, in the very near future. China's military is developing electromagnetic pulsed weapons that Beijing plans to use against U.S. aircraft carriers in the uh, very near future in, in, in case of conflict over Taiwan, according to an intelligence report made public on Thursday. Portions of a National Ground Intelligence Center study on the lethal effects of electromagnetic pulse, or EMPs, and high-powered microwave or HPMs weapons revealed that the arms are part of China's so-called assassin mace arsenal weapons that allow a technolo technologically inferior China to defeat US military forces. EMP weapons mimic the gamma ray pulse caused by a nuclear blast that knocks out all electronics including computers and automobiles over wide areas. The phenomenon was discovered in 1962 after an above-ground nuclear test in the Pacific Disabled Electronics in Hawaii. According to the report, China's electronic weapons are part of what are called trump card or assassin's mace weapons that are based on new technology that has been developed in high secrecy. In a newly created video by the Israeli Minister of Foreign Affairs, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Danny Ayellen explains the historical facts relating to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The video explains where the terms West Bank, Occupied Territories, and 1967 borders originated and how they are incorrectly used and applied. This will give you a complete understanding of the miscon misconceptions the world press and Islamic world would have you to believe. This video will also make some around the world very angry because their lies have been exposed. Please watch and enjoy. Often on the news we hear the terms occupied territories, 67 borders, and illegal settlements. And the story we usually hear sounds very simple. During the Six-Day War, Israel captured the West Bank from the Palestinians, refused the United Nations demand to retreat, and illegally built settlements. But is that really the case? 
Let's try to understand the situation a little bit better. We'll start with a simple but extremely important question. From whom did Israel capture the West Bank? From the Palestinians? No. In 1967, there was no Arab nation or state by the name of Palestine. Actually, was there ever? Israel took over the West Bank from Jordan in an act of self-defense, after Jordan joined a war launched by Egypt and Syria to destroy Israel. Oh, by the way, destroying countries is rather illegal. The United Nations back in 1967 rejected repeated Arab and Soviet attempts to declare Israel as the aggressor. Security Council Resolution 242 did not demand a unilateral Israeli withdrawal. Rather, the United Nations called for negotiating a solution which would leave Israel with secure and recognized boundaries. In effect, defensible borders. But wait a second. What was Jordan doing in the West Bank in the first place? What was its legal justification? Well, Jordan had the, you know what? It had no legal justification. Jordan simply occupied it during its previous attempt to destroy the newly established state of Israel in 1948, changing the commonly accepted name Judea and Samaria to the West Bank. But that did not really convince anybody and almost no one recognized the legality of Jordan's occupation, not even any of the other Arab states. So, if Jordan had no legal claim to the land, and a Palestine did not exist, whose territory is it? Let's go a little further back in time. Don't worry, not to the days of the Bible, only about 100 years. Until 1917, the Ottoman Empire occupied the whole region. After losing in World War I, the Ottomans relinquished their 500-year control to the Allied forces, which decided to divide the old empire into countries. Britain's foreign minister, Lord Balfour, recognized the Jewish people's historical right to their homeland, a small area equivalent to about half of 1% of the Middle East was designated for this purpose. Britain received a mandate from the League of Nations to promote the establishment of a Jewish homeland. But wait a second, do you realize what happened? The Jewish homeland originally included not only the West Bank, but also the East Bank of the Jordan River. I guess you cannot say the Jewish people have not accepted some painful compromises already. Anyway, the League of Nations recognition of a Jewish homeland which includes the West Bank was reaffirmed by the United Nations after the Second World War. With the British mandate ending, United Nations General Assembly Resolution 181 recommended the establishment of two states, one Jewish and one Arab. The Jews accepted it and went on to create the State of Israel, while the Arabs refused the compromise and launched a war to destroy the newly established Jewish state. Resolution 181, a non-binding recommendation in the first place, remained with no legal standing. At the end of the war, a ceasefire line was formed where the Israeli and Arab forces stopped fighting. At the insistence of the Arab leaders, this line was defined as having no political significance. So, although this line is commonly referred to as the 1967 border, it is not from 1967 and it was never an international border. This is why a more exact legal definition for the West Bank according to international law is really the same as in so many other areas where there are or were territorial disputes, but which are not defined as occupied. For example, Zubara, the Tams Islands, the Western Sahara, amongst many others. They are not considered occupied territories, but rather disputed territories. So, let's return for a moment to our illustration and examine the complete chain of events. Israel's presence in the West Bank is the result of a war of self-defense. The West Bank should not be considered occupied because there was no previous legal sovereign in the area. And therefore, the real definition should be disputed territory. The 1947 partition plan has no current legal standing, while Israel's claim to the land was clearly recognized by the international community during the 20th century. That is why the presence and construction of Israeli settlements in the West Bank should not be considered illegal. These are not just my own opinions. 
They are based on conclusions made by world-renowned jurists, like Professor Eugene Rastow, Justice Arthur Goldberg, and Stephen Schwebel, who headed the International Court of Justice. So what's the solution for the dispute over the West Bank? Unfortunately, there is no magic solution. But the only way a solution will ever be reached is if we base our negotiations on legal and historical facts. So please, let's stop using the terms occupied territories and 67 borders. They're simply not politically correct.